Okay, it's 3 o'clock. Let's call the Urban Design Commission to order. Please silence your cell phones and let's call roll. George McQuistian. Here. Jeff Struble. Here. Betsy Brunstetter. Lisa Cronister. Here. Brian Fitzsimmons. Matt Guillory. Here. Long Wynn. John Robison. Here. You have a quorum. Okay, terrific. Item 2A, approval of the minutes. Were there any questions, comments? about the minutes as distributed. If there are no objections, we will consider them approved via unanimous consent. And um, next item, 6A, 730 Northwest 23rd Street. Yes, Mr. Chairman, uh, Michael Felbert, Planning Department. Um, this item was on your agenda um, at the last meeting uh, in December on the 18th. And you may remember there was some discussion uh, with regard to some issues that were raised by a neighboring resident. And um, uh, as a consequence of that, the commission uh, deliberated um, at length on some of those issues and ultimately decided to continue the matter to uh, allow some time for staff and the resident and the applicant to get together and try and resolve some of those concerns. Um, after the meeting, uh, I did contact the resident and we spoke uh, on a, a couple of occasions uh, regarding uh, the uh, compliance of this project with the uh, standards that are applicable to the zoning district in the C3 district along with the UD overlay. Um, and ultimately, uh, she indicated that she didn't think meeting with the applicant was going to be very productive, so we did not ever have a meeting with the applicant and the resident, um, na the neighboring resident nearby, but at one point she did express to us the um, preference for a break in the parapet wall on the east elevation as opposed to a solid wall in that location. And we've made that part of our recommendation to you. And um, we're prepared to answer any other questions the Commission may have. Okay. Would, did anyone want to speak on this? Ken, do you want to talk? Somebody else here, uh, Ms. Seals. Oh, sorry, I don't know if she needs to sign. Um, but anyways, uh, we just wanted to say that we would like to, you know, have approval for the options that we presented last time. We do have a, a new screen. I'm sorry. Okay, we do have a an option for a walk-in cooler and um, a dumpster screen that we've added since the last meeting, and that's the only thing that's been added since. Um, and it would be constructed of the same material as the, uh, the uh, stair or the uh, parapet. We're proposing it to either be a polycarbonate or a painted lap siding, uh, which is consistent with the rest of the building. Um, one thing we would like to add in regards to the recommendation of the parapet, um, we had that originally in there as an alternate for cost, um, but there's a few uh, reasons we'd actually like to have approval for the other as well. We'd like to have the option, and that's uh, we get the sense this might be a contentious relationship and we don't want to cause any hard feelings uh, towards uh, our neighbor and vice versa and we feel like that the wall uh, really would not uh, uh, block that much sunlight and I brought some slides to show that but it would enable to have a visual privacy that we think would be uh, better for both sides of the fence if you will uh, to, to avoid potential confrontations and uh, we do have a, a slide uh, proposal here. Down. Okay. Let's see. Where do I go? There we go. Do I just hit the button? I always forget how to do this. Okay. <coughs> we just wanted to also show some of the context of this building that we're talking about with the neighbors. Um, this is uh, the proposed addition with the two story, and on this side would be the proposed parapet. Uh, this is a neighboring building to the west. It's the Greystone, uh, Greystone apartment, I believe. And then this is the uh, neighbor that we've been, uh, uh, that we had spoke about previously. And so, let's see. This shows a close-up study. If we were to do a uh, tall, the taller parapet, and this shows the sun uh, and the west uh, sunlight during the rest of the day the sun is always going to still uh, be able to reach the house it's only in the late afternoon that we're talking about here there might be a little bit of difference so that's the taller this is the shorter as you can see there's still not uh, a great deal of uh, uh, 
blocking the sunlight here. And then we've done a couple of close-ups. This is the taller and the shorter. And the concern why we would like this version is, again, as you can see, um, we just don't want there to be any uh, issues of potential uh, contentiousness with any uh, noise or on a windy day, you know how it is in Oklahoma, or, you know, my clients will do their best to keep anything from blowing around, but on windy days it's easy for a napkin or a straw wrapper, that sort of thing. And we just don't want to have situations where, um, you know, there might be things that blow across the top of the wall here. So we think that this would be a better solution, and we feel like that the, uh, the little bit of sunlight that we're talking about, this is in the late afternoon of the summer, which we actually think would be a benefit to block uh, some of the direct heat. And one of the other points I'd like to make is we have not got an official approval yet for the permit. As you know, we're part of the permit is uh, this process. But also, um, we're not sure if they're 100% going to allow an open parapet like this on a property line such as this. They may want a little bit of separation for uh, fire resistance purposes. So that's something we're still in discussion with them about. Can I ask you real quick about sure. that issue? Not to do your designing for you, I'm not doing that, but I know you had the polycarb panel as an option in other places. Mm -hmm. Would polycarb work there too, or no? It, not it certainly could. It's certainly an option, and um, uh, it would it would allow a translucence. It would still cast a shadow, but it would allow translucence. Um, it's uh, for aesthetic purposes. We were trying to limit it to the stair, though. We were hoping to make that a more special area where it glows at night. And on that side, what's well, not really going to be a, you know, like a like a laser or anything like that, but a soft glow. And so we were trying to to uh, achieve that effect at that area. And then the rest of it would be more or less a little bit quieter. And uh, that's the reason we were proposing a solid wall here. Got it. The only reason I and you know why I asked what the polycarb was because of the right, translucence. Right. Some translucence. Right. And uh, I, we greatly appreciate uh, her time in coming here today, and she'd like to say a few words if it's possible. Good afternoon. My name is Jennifer Seal, and I have Granddad's Bar, which is also on 23rd Street, and I'm a member um, of the board for the Uptown 23rd Association. I have only come to say that in the time that I have known the young men um, who are working on this proposal, they have already demonstrated a commitment to the revitalization of the Uptown 23rd District. Um, they have opened their building to let us build things. They have been present at various meetings um, on a regular basis as far as beautification is concerned and so as um, a neighbor down the street and certainly as a member of this board for Uptown I am personally in favor of this project continuing because we are working diligently to bring this area of Oklahoma City back to its former glory and these applicants have already demonstrated their commitment to this area even though their business has not been open they've been working with us for nearly two years now and participating in the revitalization efforts so I'd ask that the group take that into consideration as you deliberate thank you thank you Ken anything more at this time I, I don't have anything else to add unless you have any questions okay are there any questions for Ken right now okay okay thank you thanks for your time sure y yes ma'am Hi. Um, this, my mother is the one that lives in the house next door, and she's been there 42 years. Um, she's a very private person. Um, she's elderly, and a lot of her concerns are, um, this doesn't really show you just how close this building is. I mean, we're talking from here to the wall. I mean, that's about the, her yard, you know, and um, it's just that this is... Um, I just want to, so you can understand her concerns. Um, she is home in the evening. That's when she's home. She still works during the day, but she's home in the evenings. That's when she's out in her yard. That's when she's enjoying the sunshine out in her yard, is in the late afternoon. Um, what he showed, showed a little bit of sunlight on one in there, and that was it. Her other concern was the dumpster. I know he proposed a um, building something to keep it, showing from 23rd, but there's also her side. The dumpster's also going to be facing her property as well. But I just wanted to say that, you know, this is a privacy issue, um, and she has been there 42 years. 
I had a question. <clears throat> With the wall, now, because the wall, if, if this was going to be needed to kind of separate, but what, now with the lighting, would there be any other solutions you see with this to make this a better? She mentioned, didn't you mention about if there was some cutout in the wall? Well, I want to make a comment about that. Okay. okay. When I talk, is this Mr. Philbrook? Yes. When I talked to him on the phone and he asked me that I, was I okay with this wall? And I said, if it had some cutouts, I wouldn't mind. Well, when I read the agenda yesterday, I'm seeing where I said that I wanted 25 feet of this wall taken down and replaced with a 42-inch tall guardrails made with architectural wire grid panels and metal posts. I did not say that. I didn't even know this. I, I don't know where he come up with this, but he's doing a wonderful job for the applicant. So what, what, was, what she's what? saying is some kind of cutouts in the wall to allow the sun to come through. Like, like where her windows are, or just what, were you, what was the idea? I guess, I mean, what that. kind of cutouts are you talking well, about? I thought he was talking about like little shapes, like an outhouse, or a star, or a diamond, or something. Uh, where I could get some sunlight, and I have a reason for wanting this. And I didn't think I would ever have to defend it or justify it, but I guess I'm going to have to. And it comes down to my religion. I don't belong to a brick building where I go in once a week and call myself a Christian. I worship in my backyard, and I have for decades. I listen to my sermons, I listen to my gospel music, I do my prayers, I do everything out there, and I do it after I get home from work in the sunlight. I do it every day. And I think this is going to interfere with my freedom of religion. Unless there's a city ordinance that trumps the U.S. Constitution, the Bill of Rights, and the 14th Amendment. I just wanted to ask a clar clarifying question. It, are, we f are we primarily focused on sunlight in the front yard or in the, it sounds like maybe the back in the yard? the side, the side yard. In, in the... Um, the back and the side that she, she's got stuff set up to, in the side yard. In, in the, could, could we, in, in where the I images see right See the gate there. right there toward the back. Yes. Okay, sir. over the gate, right in there. Okay. So more towards the, <clears throat> from the gate towards the back of yes. the yard is where you're more yes. concerned? Yes. Okay. Yes. That's the part. Okay. And this, and um, just, and just so I'm clear, so, the, and the shadow that we're seeing here, Ken, this was, this is the maximum shadow, is that correct? Or? Correct. The shadow would be cast from the south, so the backyard would not be affected. Okay. So, so the the back the backyard. Just to clarify, so the, the backyard would remain would have the sun it currently has. It would the backyard would not be impacted by the building. Correct, as because the, the sun arc comes up in the east and goes up in the southerly direction, comes down in the west. So, the backyard will not be affected at all. The side yard won't be affected, except as you see on the slide here. There's a little bit of shadow at the the gate area going north. Um, the two-story will not cast shadows towards the backyard. Okay, there's not, I don't know if you've seen the property, but the backyard, the main yard is the side yard. And there is a backyard, but it opens up to the blood bank and all of the uh, people who are coming back and forth from the parking lot to sell their blood. I have a garage back there. I don't spend any time in the back. Oh, there's a garage back behind the I house. spend my time on my side yard. Okay. Although if the trash receptacle is set in the back and I have the flies and the mosquitoes and everything and the stench that comes from that, it'll be about two feet from my backyard. Um, I, I'd just like to add that actually the dumpster we were trying to locate, I, I don't think we have the slides with the plan or do we? We would actually propose to locate that um, closer to the... Uh, um, oh, the east side of the building um, at the south end, so it would actually be pulled back a little bit if, if that would help. Um, but that would have a fence around all four sides, I mean, three sides and then um, a gate. Let's see, do we have the, is there a slide up there by chance with the, the latest uh, dumpster screen? I don't think so. Okay. If we can go one more slide, I think. Uh, 
Um, it's not up here, but essentially it's uh, at the south end of the build. It's at the south of the building, closer to the west side of the building, uh, southwest of the building rather than southeast. So oh, it's the last. Southwest the last. of their building. Not Is that going to be enclosed? Uh, yeah. We had proposed putting. Here's a here's but an image of it. I'm sorry. About yeah. So the. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, so on the uh, north is up here. So on the uh, the lower left hand of that screen, you can see the dumpster uh, there. And we were proposing a a seven or eight foot tall screen running south of the building to the existing retaining wall on the alleyway. Uh, the ordinance requires a, a screening from the street side, and uh, that's what our what we're showing here is that it's screened from the street and the out the on the alley side. There's actually a, a five to six foot tall retaining wall there. So, so what about the, <clears throat> the, uh, the side, I guess, would be the uh, east side to the neighbor? The east side, yeah. The, the retaining wall goes up in height. I can't remember the exact height, but it's probably six or seven feet tall. It may be roughly the height of the dumpster. So. Now that's on the Chartel side, right? Uh, the Chartel side would be on the yeah, left. Yeah, well, I'm on the other side. <clears throat> yes, ma'am. And how many feet is it from the dumpster to my backyard? It's probably about 25 feet. Oh, it's going to be right on the on the street then. It's going to be on the other side. On it's the, on the other side. It's on the Chartel side, right? No, yes, it's, yes, it's behind the building. It, it's on the south of the building. Correct. That's not 25 feet. 25 feet would be almost to the end of the building. And, and that's where we're proposing we'll, it. So we'll it's, measure it and okay. see. Okay. Um, and then could I ask, uh, I'm sorry, Jeff, are you done getting more questions? Go ahead. The, um, the g given that the that the side yard seems to be the focus i'm wondering if the um the the parapet wall on the east side you know the discussion we just had should it should it have that big cutout should it be the um uh, a solid wall i think the applicant if i understand is suggesting a solid wall might be better simply for noise and and napkins and cups that might blow over oh well, yeah we don't want that or we'll be making phone calls um, uh, is there soundproofing in the wall for the noise factor although mr philbrook said all of my uh all of my factors and issues and concerns were all irrelevant i don't think they are Um, I, I don't know if, if the wall is soundproofed or... There, there's not any special sound attenuation, The soundproofing no. is my problem. I don't want to listen to noise every night of a bunch of drunks. Any more than they want to listen to my sermons and my gospel music. The, the, the issue that I think we're, we're going to run up against here, and this is probably one of those cases where there's no exact right answer, and Michael can correct me where I'm wrong, but, but the zoning, the current zoning, is, um, is commercial three, is that correct? And, um, and, so I, and, and so in terms of the city's goal, there's a certain, there's, there's a notion of something's allowed by right, given the zoning, to, to be built a certain way. Then also the city has the goals of, of um, trying to make the residents, trying to accommodate the residents, but also um, do what we can to generate urban revitalization and development. As you, you've heard um, uh, one of the um, uh, uh, people at the mic talk about the redevelopment of, of Northwest 23rd Street. So, we're trying to figure out what is the best way to accommodate your concerns while allowing the city to revitalize Northwest 23rd Street and doing it in a way that, that corresponds to the existing zoning there. So you would prefer to have the cutout? No, I don't think so. I, I don't think so. They're just saying that their, their smoke is going to come through. And they're just saying the, the noise um, level. Um, and they were talking about things blowing in your yard. Um, well, that's a sanitary issue, isn't it? Yeah, that, the, that that would block that. I got a question. How, would also, the, I would have the to the wall, I mean, up, up top, how from the front of the building, how far does that come back? Um, it goes back to the uh, bar, the upper level bar, and it stops there. 
So, so okay. it's probably about 35 feet, I believe. I don't have it memorized. But right. right. That's, okay. How tall is it? It's uh, we're proposing it as eight feet tall. Yeah. Above I, the existing uh, uh, but, wall. You know, I think it would be a, a more of a nuisance uh, to the neighbor not to have that parapet up there. I, I think the parapets, you know, more uh, what it would keep out would be uh, debris and uh, some of the noise. And I think that would be, uh, I think that would be a must. I think you need to have that. I don't think the, I don't think the guardrail would solve anybody's problems. Right, and and we that's why after further consideration we would ask the same because again it's not they're not going to condone people intentionally throwing debris or anything like that over. But on windy days, you know sometimes it can't yeah. be helped. Wind picks up 20 mile an hour gust and. Everything on the table blows off. That happens from time to time. I, I don't see uh, that. And this is a late. This is a late afternoon sun shadow, right? Correct. And this and is that's, like this is really like more like five o'clock. Yes, sir. Uh, roughly. Yes. Sir. So um, and during and I don't know what what time the yard is needed by the uh, uh, what time the side yard gets used. But at 5 o'clock is that shadow you're looking at. She gets off work at 5. Yeah, so what? She's usually home by 5.30. I'm home by 5 after 5. Yeah, I work at the Capitol. I might say that in, in August or, uh, well, you know, any time from uh, July on, that's going to be a pretty beastly hot area, with, and the, that parapet would help keep that heat down so I I know you wouldn't want I know you wouldn't like it without the parapet off your house too I haven't had a trouble with heat um I know we're talking about the wall but I had a concern too about the parking um the parking back behind belongs to I believe that property does that belong to the blood bank mm -hmm. I, I'm not familiar oh, with And my understanding that. is they're not going to allow anyone to use their parking lot. There's and no so, parking requirements on 23rd. <clears throat> so they so, can park on 23rd. Or walk. Okay. And how, how big a place? Is this going to be upscale dining or is this a dive? No, no. It's they're definitely not spending money to make this a dive. They want to make it nice and it will definitely be a very uh, nice place to hang out, a place for professionals. Uh, after hours or during lunch, there, there's also food. It's not just a bar, so it's. Well, I mean, I know there's smoking up there, and I know we're all about clean air and uh, smoke-free zones and all this. And there's going to be smoke everywhere up there because you're promoting smoking. Uh, that's why you have it up there, is so people can smoke. It it sounds, um, and I'm going to jump back to the wall here for a second, but it sounds like. The wall might be the way to go. If you're if you're looking for separation from potential napkins and cups and whatnot, a better noise barrier, a barrier for any possible smoking that might go up there. Given that given that the the amount of of shade is not going to be hugely influenced by this in that in the side yard, it will, it will in the late afternoon. I think. And what you're hearing up here from people who have a lot of experience in doing developments and designing things is that if, if what you want is separation, you probably want the wall. I, I think she agrees with that, with having the wall. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think that's and then, not so, so I just want to make sure that we're kind of clear on that one point, that, that the wall sounds like it's a good solution for everybody. And then I think your concern about the parking is one we should address. But before we move on to it, I want to make sure that we're kind of on the same page with the wall. And yeah, if that, I, I mean, if that's, it's a choice of a wall or no wall, then definitely a wall. Well, and one thing, too, I thought, Ms. Sensor, given one thought is the noise is a big factor. So I wonder if we could look at doing something more as a noise barrier to that. And then, you know, you're going to lose some of the sun, but maybe that you could work to kind of appease in that way to, to try to, to there, there's really not much in the way of uh, you know noise that we could address there, to be honest, unless we put a roof on it. When you look at acoustics for outdoor uh, deflection of sound in a case like this is your best bet, and that will be 
if we do the wall, that will definitely help because it will deflect the sound up. Um, a roof would help. A roof would help. But the, the whole, yes, correct. The, the whole notion of this was to try to promote a more urban uh, rooftop experience. And this is something that's new, we realize, to some parts of Oklahoma City, but it's been done quite successfully elsewhere in the U.S. And, you know, it's part of the revitalization. We think this would be an excellent uh, addition to the neighborhood. Now, I, I do have a question I want to ask. Let's say, for instance, this doesn't make a go of it, that people don't want to walk two or three blocks to go dine, and that there's, it's not successful, and they close down. What happens to that wall? Well, I, I, the wall would be there, would be on the building. It, it's it, not, it's, he said the wall would be there. But it, it seems to me, and I could be wrong, but it seems to me that, that in terms of the, the livability of the street, the safety of the street, what you, would, what you would want to see or what you might hope to see, certainly what the city hopes to see, are people coming in who are motivated to make it a success, who are putting their own money on the line and will be hurt more than anybody if it's not a success, and trying to to, to bring new investment and, and new uh, construction to the area. Now, I could be wrong. That, that may not be your point of view. He, he said that you know, they're putting a lot of money into it, and they're going to try to make it a success. I, I will just say that no one, if this is built, I know, no And I want every corporation that comes in selling alcohol and promoting tobacco to be a success. That's definitely on my agenda. Well, ma'am, before you go, or if, I'm sorry, I have to sit down. I can't stand it. Oh, okay. Um, I, I think the parking is a valid concern, and, and if you would like to discuss that, I maybe we no, should. No, that was, I'm just wondering where, uh, because, you know, she's got a driveway, and she's got some parking in her driveway, and then I don't know that the Plasma Center owns that whole parking lot, but I do know that they have said that they will tow anyone that is parked there that's not part of the blood bank. Um, so I was just concerned about where people were going to park. What, and I, think a fair, I think that's a fair concern. And, and Matt, jump in here because I think you may have, have some thoughts on the topic. But in general, along this section of 23rd, if there have been some cases where an event center or something that's going to have concerts, mm -hmm. they want to come in and we want to make sure they have some parking just because of the sheer numbers of people over the short duration of time they're going to be bringing in. One of the goals with Northwest 23rd is to make it more of an urban environment that you would see in other cities where people park on the street, or park on Northwest 23rd, and, and feel comfortable walking along the street. It's safe enough. Additional pedestrian traffic actually makes the street safer. Feel safe enough to walk to whatever establishment they're going to go to. Now, the developers are taking a chance that that's, right. okay. that that's going to happen. The people will feel comfortable doing that. Okay. But, but certainly, we wouldn't condone, the city wouldn't condone parking in the blood bank or parking in someone else's parking lot when you don't have permission to do so. Okay. Uh, do, you, do you have other, do you or your mother have other questions? Okay. In closing, I just want to say that I am used to worshiping in the sunshine. Okay? I'm used to it. I've been used to it for years and years and years. And now I'm not going to have that sunshine. Is there a city ordinance about moving my site that I will be worshiping to my front yard over on the east, on the west side of my building? because I have a little uh, recess there. Of course, it's very close to the front door of their building, but it is a little recess that I'm, I would at least have more sunshine, more view, more skyline. Is that going to be a problem as far as the city ordinance is concerned? I, I'm not aware of any ordinances that would prohibit you from performing okay. your religious services. Because I can play my gospel music and listen to my sermons in my front yard also if I don't have the sunshine in the backyard. And I'm sorry, what did that gentleman say all about? Which one? That you come over to tell me about? No, I wonder if you had any other. No. 
Okay. Camp 5 City Hall. Okay. Is there anything else? Uh, any other questions or comments? My, uh, my observation or concern is, is kind of regarding parking and the additional, um, the added occupancy. Uh, and the building as is looks like it's uh, slated for 102 total occupancy, but with the additional rooftop and front area that brings it up to 193. Um, with this being on the intersection of Chartel and 23rd, and there's not really going to be a, the opportunity for parking on Chartel itself. That's a fairly so public narrow, traffic narrow. thoroughfare. So I, my concern is, um, what is the plan for parking? Uh, 194, you know, for the full occupancy. Right. And first off, I'd like to say that on the business model side, um, I think it's fair to say that. Um, it's not necessarily going to be maxed out at 200, you know, 197 people, you know, all times. Um, but as far as parking, I think they're in the same boat as everybody else along 23rd Street and Plaza District, for that matter, Midtown. I mean, all the areas in the city are dealing with this, and and uh, I think it's something as we move transition from a suburban a car for every person, it'll be a transition, so there will be less traffic over time. But in the immediate future, the plan is to discuss with a potential uh, commercial. Uh, neighbors that may have parking lots or, or properties that they may be interested in leasing lots as, as one way to supplement parking, uh, street parking. But I would, you know, again like to uh, just point out that I think this is going to be, this is an issue for all of urban areas and, and I think over time there'll be, there may be some growing pains, but I think it will eventually uh, uh, find ways to resolve itself. I know parking came up a little bit last month. Has there been any opportunity or attempt to discuss parking options with the Plasma Center? I, I don't know. There's a huge I, lot. Yeah, I, I don't want to speculate on my client's behalf on if they have negotiations in process. Is your client here? Uh, yes. Yeah, my, my partner, Jerry Fredell, actually has made um, I made efforts to contact the owner of the plasma center. So, and any so far, there's nothing in writing. No. Okay. And like I said, my 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 concern is just the the added space and occupancy. I mean, it's an increase of almost ninety percent. So it's um, it's something to take into consideration. And then also I had a question about the uh, the front outdoor street patio as an alternative. Is that something that we're taking off, or is that something we're still wanting to have as an all? Well, we'd still like to have it as an alternate if we could. It's it's something that may not happen immediately again, but it you know it may happen. I think the permit, the CA application is good for a year or two, right? Um, so if if in the near future they decide to go that route, then we'd like to have that on the table. Because I think that would bring up more problems with the neighbor having, <clears throat> you know, seating in the front yard out there. That's why I was. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Um. So it sounds it so, thanks. Okay. So it sounds like when just to look at the staff recommendation here, based on on, on what we've heard and um, what both the applicant and the um, residents have said, is that um, the uh, the parapet wall is probably best mandated to be solid. Is that would is that kind of the sense sense we're getting? And it sounds like the. Um, like the, the dumpster, with the new dumpster information, the dumpster and the cooler were okay with, with that sort of thing. What about, and, and the parking, I mean the parking is not, Michael, it's not, it, there is no parking requirement, is that correct or what, where are we with this? Um, when they initially came in with this project to our department, they had I think a plan that showed about five parking stalls on site but it was really complicated because everything was kind of very difficult to circulate 
two on site, and I think three of the stalls were on the Chartel side that were and they were straddling the property line and the right of way. So you had stalls that were partially on the property and partially in the public right of way, and that was a, another issue that requires a variance before the, the BOA. So as a, as, a, as a means to try and avoid <coughs> those complications, they took that parking off the table. I think that they're still exploring ways to get some parking on site, but it's just not part of the consideration before you this afternoon. Okay. All right. The, um, my personal preference is, my personal observation about 23rd and other parts of the city are that we are at kind of the tipping point where we're not really going to develop an urban environment unless entrepreneurs take chances without having all parking in a lot and we, we educate the residents to be able to, 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 uh, to get used to that basically. And I don't know where to draw the line. I don't, you know, the event center you know, next to the tower, you know, parking problem. This less of a problem, at least for me. And where does that line get drawn? I don't, I don't know, frankly. I, mean, it's a, I think it's a good question, Matt, that you're highlighting. I don't know what the answer, where exactly the line is. I mean, we can go by the code and the zoning, and, and that gives us a, a clear answer. But, um, but beyond that, I don't know exactly what the right answer. I, I can see a time uh, when we're going to, we're going to wish that we had solved that problem before we went you know, before we zone things commercial and then said, but you don't have to have parking, to me, that's, uh, that needs work. Right. I mean, that really needs work urgently. I, I would, I don't think this is, is, this is particularly good because of that. Mm -hmm. I, I think we're going to have problems in these little districts uh, where there is really no parking. There's no parking at all here. And people mm -hmm. aren't going to walk three blocks to it. You know, they'll walk a block, which means they're going to park on one of those little side streets in front of all those houses that are already parking in front of their houses. And, you know, it's, I think we're going to, I think we're going to run into some problems down the road. I think, not under this agenda item, but later I want to talk about you know, the with the 23rd neighborhood groups and talking with those we, we discussed before, I think Matt highlighted a couple of meetings ago, would be a good thing to do. And I, I think, I don't, I think you're right. I mean, nobody could argue with yeah. that. I know you uh, don't. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah. know you think it's right. It's just, it's, it's just nuts. We used to have parking uh, in front of some of those areas, uh, and uh, you know, we improved everything and didn't take care of the parking. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it would be great to be proactive because the next application for this type, the neighbors on 22nd Street will come. And right. This I is, would. This is, this is no good answer. I mean, we're, we're getting good developments, a great uh, enterprise that they've got, it's a nice looking building, they're doing a good job on everything. But if you ask the architect, he would like to have another lot <laughs> where he could park, you know. And uh, all planners would agree. The, although I have to say that Russell, on his way out, we were chatting about 23rd, and he said, 23rd, you've got to teach people they don't need to have a parking lot to, to be able to use the establishments, or else that area is never going to take off. So I don't know. I don't know what the right answer well, uh, is. <laughs> yeah, uh, they have to be able to park somewhere and walk in. Uh, they're not coming on the bus. <laughs> uh, you know, they might eventually someday come on the bus, but you know, or a streetcar. They're not coming on the bus, right. so uh, it's a risky deal. And to Russell's point, I mean, I you know, this is an abandoned building. We want this to be used and put back into commerce and on the tax rolls and things. Um, the flip side of that is almost doubling the occupancy, exacerbates the potential parking mm -hmm. so well let me ask okay so let me, and yes that, that's exactly right um, in light of that and in light of a comment Jeff made before we do a motion yeah. I want to ask so what do we think about the alternative of doing the the front the front area 
The patio? The pat yes, the front patio. I I think we ought to do it later. I think I'd agree. I, I feel comfortable not putting it in as an alternative. I think that if they get up and going and feel that need, they can come back with another application. But I think what we ought to do is we ought to find some way that that we can start discuss, discussing uh, how that problem gets solved on in that area. And, and if there's no answer, then maybe we need to think about the zoning. It is. It's a hard answer. I know in the Plaza District, people are parking three blocks out on both sides in front yeah. of houses, and it and <clears throat> you know it's just, it, it's you know becoming a nuisance, and that is going to be a huge problem on twenty. Well, and, but it, on Plaza, you've got more more residentials around. But, yeah, but, you've got a lot more but, flexibility <clears throat> there than we but, do here on Twenty Third. Right. But the sales it's got its own parking. You know, it's a, it is literally a parking district. They made it that way. Yeah. And uh, so you can park anywhere on the street where there's a bald spot. You know. But uh, we don't have those opportunities right now on 23rd. I think it's a planning challenge that needs addressed. I agree. So, so just to <laughs> summarize. Um, it sounds like we're, we're getting okay with the application. We want the parapet wall, so, so we're, we're not in favor of the um, option 1F3. We'd prefer 1F1 one or 2. And in addition, we're, we prefer not to have the option of the front patio. We prefer to have the applicants come back in the future for that. Right. We might have a solution for them then. And before motion, I just have one clarification. Yeah. With um, re regard to the dumpster, the, the um, fencing around the dumpster, I know you said on the east side it's a parapet wall that's eight-ish feet high, or six-ish feet tall. Is that level with her property, or is her property? You're talking about the, east, the existing retaining wall? Yes. Uh, yes, her, her house sits up higher than the. Okay, it, and do you have any plans for putting a fence on top of that retaining wall to shield her view we, of we had We had not planned on that. Okay, um, that, that, I was yeah. making sure I understood that properly. Well, I thought you said you were screening the uh, dumpster, though. Yes, sir, from yeah. the uh, the west side, on the Chartel side. That's The ordinances require a street uh, okay, screening. Okay, not so. from the east side. Correct. That be the okay, side. I misread that. Would that be something the applicant would be willing to do on the east side since there is a, and since I didn't realize too that, that her property was higher over there because that's. Right. Well, I, I guess I'd just like to submit that again for, you know, for the zoning the interior uh, lot line does, uh, you know, not require that and, and it would, it would certainly add additional costs to the project and we just, we'd prefer to just keep it on the west side if that's possible. Is, is the retaining wall sufficient so that it's I, safe? I don't know. Is the retaining wall, know. how tall is it back It's there? It's five or six feet tall. I mean, it's it's perfectly fine for what it's currently, you know, doing, well, it seems like. But, but if I there's no fence there, though, somebody could get injured, right? From her side? Yeah. Well, I mean, that's, that's already there. That's an existing condition. Yeah, but we're adding the public into the equation. They, they would not be coming through her backyard, though. I'm not following the... Okay. Well, I, I unless think they came I, through her backyard, they would not be at that area. I, I think where, where we're coming from, though, is you, kind of a, a simple question. Can she see the dumpster given the elevation change? Is she look, is she, can, she, sure. can she see the dumpster from her backyard? I'm sure she could. There's trash containers there now. Right. Um, um, I mean, it, it, you know, I, fence. Is it required, you know, is it required by, by code to screen it? You know, no, but she's looking at it. There's a retaining wall, so it's a difficult problem. Help. Can we get creative? How can we help? Well, I would just, we would have to look into it. I mean, because if we can't rely on that existing retaining wall, you may be talking about from a load standpoint, instead of just, uh, you know, figuring a five or six foot tall on top of an existing wall, you, may, you have to figure going down in the grade on your side. And uh, so then we're looking at loads on a 15 foot tall, 16 foot tall cantilever uh, fence, and that becomes a whole other animal. And then you've got pretty deep piers and, and all right. of that. It becomes right. a, a, quite a proposition. Is, is, and maybe I, I don't understand, but 
but so so your property is here. Her property is is That's there. That's correct. And now, is there any? Is there? And, and then, so we're talking about your south um, southwest corner. And is there any? Um, is there any chain link fence or anything? And I haven't I haven't examined the back. There. There's just nothing. It's just. Well, there on the alley side, this this retaining wall that we that we've been talking about runs down the east, north to south, on east of the building between the two properties. Then it turns to the west and uh, runs over oh, probably two or three feet west of the building. And it's uh, it varies in height, but it, I, as I recall, it's probably about four or five feet tall at that point where the cursor is, and then it gets progressively taller. Um, or I think it stays the same height along the alley, sorry, and then it gets taller as it goes on to her side. Okay, and but and, but her her yard level is at the top of the retaining wall, or how does that? I it's I haven't walked over there on top of that yard, but I think it's pretty close. Yeah. Hmm. And there's no fence, not even a chain link, and not okay. currently. Is that everything? I'm not seeing. Back here for me. She can yeah. walk right into our. I feel like there's something. Yeah. Is it, is it right? I, yeah, I don't. I don't think there is. Is there a, a fence between the in the back area? No, oh, we're on your on that side. Right. right. Uh, no, or any kind of. No, uh, what it is is that basically her yard is equal to the top of the retaining wall, and then there's her yard is equal to the top of the retaining wall, and then there might be two feet at the two to three feet between the retaining wall and the building next to Oh, no, there's not. Oh, no, not, okay. There's not that. Yeah, there's it's just, and then the retaining, but no, her yard's, she's going to own on a hill, so it is equal to the retaining wall. And, and, and for safety, you've never put, there's never been a fence separating the, her backyard from that drop-off? Uh, no, she's never had children there. Um, I have dogs. She has dogs, and they bark a lot. My dogs <laughs> but, um, no, there is. She's never had children there, so there's never been a reason to. It's only been her. Okay. So, so the applicant would be against putting a stockade fence up on. It sounds like that you could that could be put in the dirt if it's level, so it wouldn't have to be on the wall. It has to be maybe. We would have to get her permission to do that. I, again, I, I don't know. What would you, I, I think we'd prefer not to put a fence if it's possible, if, if as far as the motion. Yeah, I would definitely prefer not to just for a cost, um, for cost sake, but if, if that were something that was going to make it or break a deal, we're definitely willing to compromise about a fence being put up. So. Or on the other hand, are there any types of enclosures you can imagine for the, for the dumpster that would have some type of a, a lid or cover on it? When you get into that, all the trash trucks, they don't want any sort of enclosure, and they want them to be, basically, they, they, they want it as big as you can make it. And the minimum size on the interior is typically 12 by 12 or 14 by 14, and, and they definitely don't want lids on it, okay. it, it because of the way the trucks kind of right. come up. Right, they just want to pull yeah. and, this, and we're planning on a small dumpster here. It's not a large one, but still, um, it just requires maneuvering room. The only way you, know, you could get around that is to do blue bins, and for a restaurant, that's just blue bins are not going to work. Right. Right. So, so that what we're wrestling with here, clear, and by the way, thanks to you guys both, because I know you know you're trying to be an entrepreneur and you're getting involved in the city, and I applaud you for kind of sticking through it and and working through it. And thanks to you for voicing your concerns and and trying to achieve what you want to achieve. The tension we have here is that is that I think we on the commission are concerned about this open dumpster. There's no code that says it has to be covered. There are, you know, kind of logistical issues for trying to do something, to trying to cover it up in certain ways, and cost issues. But I don't, you know, I guess Ken, I'm going to toss it up to you. You're probably one of the most creative people in the room. How can we, how can we figure this out? What can we do? In regards to the dumpster specifically? Yeah. Well, I, you know, again, I'd like to propose that if you drive around town and you look at other. Uh, dumpsters. Um, I feel like what we're proposing here is actually better than a lot of situations. A lot of times people put up a very inexpensive uh, uh, enclosures that fall apart because the dumpster trucks 
every time they swing the gates, they don't care, and they get in disrepair pretty quick. And we're actually proposing a little bit nicer uh, uh, gate here. And then we have concrete walls on the side. So I feel like currently what we what we're proposing is is better or than what you see in, in a good bit of uh, areas with dumpsters. And so we feel like this is adequate, and uh, we feel like that this will take care of what the zoning ordinance intent is to screen it from the street. And uh, we, we would propose to uh, have it approved as it is. And I guess what we're talking about, because you do have a residence next to you, you know, and that's where that's part of the sure. getting screened, because it's at the back of the property, so even from the, the street is taken care of, but not from your, your neighbor's side. So I guess right. that's what we're discussing. Right. And, but there are instances in other parts of the city, I guess. Um, I, I definitely empathize, and, and I don't want to sound callous. I live on a very busy street myself on 36th Street. And uh, you know, part of the nature of when you live on a busy street, it's uh, whether that's by choice or otherwise, I mean, there are things that you, you deal with there that you don't deal with in normal uh, streets. I mean, the, the, the cars are probably the, the, the single most uh, bothersome issue to me, and cars on 23rd are certainly heavier than 36th. So I feel like that the, uh, you know, the impact we're going to have here is not going to change a thing. And, and uh, if anything, we hope that it will encourage uh, other business owners who may want to, you know, finally buy the blood bank out. Maybe something better comes along there. Um, we feel like this is another piece of the puzzle to making that end of the block better. And it is getting better across the street. There's currently places that serve alcohol, Guernsey Park and Bubba's Barbecue. And as far as I know, there's no issues there. Um, you know, so we feel like this is this is an, this is something that's a benefit to the neighborhood, not a detriment. And, and your point what is also, I think you mentioned earlier, just to make sure I'm clear, that the, that the dumpster was an existing condition, that that's the way it was. Correct. There, there's no screening now, currently. They have, a, they have three blue bins. I think there's been evidence in the past there may have been a dumpster there, but it would have just been sitting behind the building, and that would have been the extent of it. There wouldn't have been any screening. There, there's an image. Okay. okay. Yeah, I was trying to make that out. <coughs> And just to clarify, there was some discussion about the distance of the dumpster from the property line. This property, the width of this property is 55 feet from corner to corner. So placing it approximately midway on the lot would be somewhere around 20, 25 feet from the property line. Okay. 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 So I, so, so we're still, I am looking at this picture and there is, there is a, a retaining wall there that's, that goes above grade and the Michael, your point is the dumpster is it is at least probably 25 uh, 20 feet away if not okay you know, a little bit more than that uh, one option that hasn't been discussed that you know you might want to consider is instead of a fence here you you could put a fence yeah, immediately east of it yeah. that would be six or eight feet tall and, and not cover it and that would that would shield it as well but again it's an additional cost issue for the applicant okay Okay, I, I, I don't know who has a great insight. Well, the, the screen, uh, I thought of that too. Uh, you could put a little screen right behind it that would, that would eliminate the, the view. I, if, there's, if that's pretty much what they're looking at now, maybe it's not objectionable. I'm, I'm a little more concerned about somebody, uh, uh, sort of somebody's dog stepping off that, <laughs> that retaining wall in back. But, um, Put a fence up in front if uh, we thought that was necessary. I don't think it would be that expensive. Just along the dumpster side. Mm -hmm. And I, I would agree with that. I think Michael's idea is a good one. I, I would just encourage the applicant to um, you know, try and do whatever possible to. I, I anticipate this being a difficult relationship to navigate going forward between these two neighbors. And I, I you know. I don't envy either, to be honest. So uh, anything that can make that more amicable uh, is a small price to pay to put up a, a short fence there. Anybody else? OK. Um, I think I'm kind of inclined to, um, to, to leave this one up to the entrepreneur in terms of neighbor management. I mean, it looks like it, um, there's separation. There is a bit of a wall already. 
Um, we can't make you do something that the code doesn't doesn't say. At the same time, there's you know, as Matt pointed out, there's a relationship there that's going to be ongoing. So, so I, I don't know. I'm, I'm not prepared to come down hard on you one way or the other. Um, okay. Thanks everyone for sticking with us on all that. Do we have any motions? Move approved. Okay. And and with what with what um. Oh, well, with the conditions. With the um, conditions that were described earlier about the parapet. Um, what else? Okay, Paula, you want to tell us what you need on this one? Right. And then, and that, and that we the um, go ahead, Jeff. The the front patio we would. Like not to be yeah, an option. not include not to yeah. be an option right. for a later date for a, for a later date. Um, well, I, I'm I think I, my my sense was that we wanted to see how things were going, how the parking turned out to be, how the so I'm not so continuing it. I think might be a little bit near to term, but on the same by the same. Same time, I don't want them to have to pay more fees and all. So, how, if we continue it, what's the longest we can let it we can let it be continued? It's it's typically like 90 days or something like that. So, I think I think if the commission's preference is not to have that part of the project at this time, it probably should just deny that element and have have them come back for another separate application. It could be an amendment to this case. Okay. Is there a way that they don't have to repay all the fees to come back and get it? Um, well, I mean, that's that's one thing we'd have to look into because basically uh, it may be small enough, just the patio on its own, that it might be considered an administrative approval. So the fee would only be 100 instead of the 500, but then okay. it also would not come back to the commission. So I'm sure you're concerned about not having that happen as well. Um, so there may be a way to condition it that, that – uh, you know, if it if it comes back in as an administrative approval, that it still come back to the commission for consideration. Okay. Well, then would we have to put some stipulations on what it would be contingent upon if it came back for administrative approval, and would we even have the authority to do that? Yeah, well, I'm not the, sure. We... The code already gives the staff authority to elevate a administrative approval to the commission. So and it would be the... if you give us that direction, we can, we can do that. And it would be at the administrative fee. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That, okay. That. okay. And real quick, Ken, and what were you guys thinking about making the call on this on that front patio? You, you have it. You have a, a time frame, or or uh... there's really not a set time yet. But I mean, it would. It's the one thing I would like to add, um, kind of related to this, is that uh, not that I take OKC talk as the gospel, but uh, there are a lot of you know good thoughts on there. Sometimes, sometimes not so good thoughts. But one of the things that they put out there, and I think this goes to your point about Russell uh, talking about this, and hopefully this isn't too tangential, but uh, they mentioned that they actually, when they saw the renderings of this project, they were excited about it, but actually several of the comments were, why isn't there, uh, why isn't there more uh, dining on the street? Where we actually had several comments, people should be brought closer to the street. And so it's just uh, interesting how, you know, sometimes issues are regarded as detriments and sometimes as benefits. but. Uh, Anyways, I know that they're, they don't really have any direct bearing on this, but it's just interesting that I think that attitudes are changing, and, and that's the reason we would uh, like to keep it open. I mean, it may be that it doesn't happen for some time. It may be that once they open the doors, they decide, you know, they could really benefit from this and, and uh, move to, to do that. Um, so <clears throat> the, the goal right now is to get them up and going. They really wanted to get in there by March. There's an uptown uh, 23rd uh, uh, activity or yeah, walk fest going on in late March, and I, I don't know if we're going to make it since this was continued, but they really just want to get in there and start it up, and then we'll see how it goes from there. Okay. And, and that's a lot of the reason we wanted to go ahead and have it approved, because I know that, you know, if it does turn contentious, you know, we just don't want it to be something that drags out in the future again either. I gotcha. I gotcha. Um, at, at the same time, I think you heard some real concerns about how, you know, what's parking going to look like and how right, is this right. going to and, and I guess, I mean, I'm certainly, I empathize with that, but, but again, I think at some point, as, as you pointed out, there's a, there's a paradigm shift and 
I mean, I have a car. I have, you know, we have several cars in my family, so we haven't made that shift either. But I'm hoping that with uh, some of the new things coming, you know, hopefully improved bus routes and maybe the trolley car. I don't know, people may be taking uh, more bicycles or whatever. But I'm hoping that we start to move to, you know, other, uh, as we call ourselves, the big league city. We start to do what other cities have done. You know, we, when you go to Chicago or New York, you don't even use a car. So. I don't, I don't pretend that that day is around the corner next year, but I would like to think that we're within reach of that in a short time, Okay. Yeah, at least those, in this district. Those are all valid comments. Um, so, so given that and that, it's, and that it's hanging out there, I think the suggestion that I heard from this side of the horseshoe that let's do something where we can have them pay the lower fee and we can review it quickly and we can get them give them an answer today about the bulk of the project and they can get rolling on that. I think that sounds like it would be the best way to approach it. So, okay, and, and, and did, did you, so we've incorporated all the, so, okay, I know, sorry, Paul, this is, yep. Action on that particular. I mean, we, we really would like to keep it on there if we could, but we don't want to hold the. If it's going to be the deal breaker, I think that's fair to say. If it's the deal breaker between the whole deal, then we'll take it off there. We, at the least, we'd like whatever we could to keep it, yes, going forward without paying additional fees and things of that nature. We you know, let, let's like continue it for the longest amount we can continue it, and then, and then, because I think it has up like up into a year or something, or before it, it has a certain, a certain period of time without us hearing it before, then it gets an automatic denial. Right. So let's uh, try to help these guys out. Let's just do that. Let's continue it for as long as we can continue it, and then we'll, um, we'll, also known as kicking the can down the road. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll take that approach. Okay. Okay, so John, have we captured everything you wanted to uh, say? I can, <laughs> I can live with all of those things, but I don't think I could repeat all of those things. But, uh. Okay, so, so we're, we're, just so I, just to summarize, we're moving for approval. However, we, we don't want the, um, the uh, option of the, um, 1F3, the, the cutout of that east parapet wall, we are um, um, recommending that, uh, that we uh, continue the, uh, the front plaza, the front, front patio. Am I missing anything else, Paula? Are, okay. Are you um, supportive of the item 1B, which is the uh, enclosure of the walking cooler? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yes, consistent with using materials consistent with the surface of the rear building. Yeah. Yes, so that's, that's, yes, we're included in the motion and that would be part of the recommendation. Anything else, Michael, Paula? No, okay, so we have a, a very well-spoken, <laughs> articulate motion. I'll second. Uh, uh, Matt uh, Guillory is gonna second that. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, that motion Passes, thanks to everybody. Really appreciate your sticking with us on this one. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Um, so uh, 7A, other business, elect chair and vice chair. And I wanted to make a, a comment before we do this. Um, the, uh, you know, it's, it's easy just to, just to nominate the people who are currently in the role and, um, and move on with it. But I want to say that, you know, if any, I, I think we're probably all are involved with nonprofits and stuff. And if you've ever drafted bylaws or worked with it, there's this thing called founder syndrome or president syndrome where you don't want people to be in the same spot for too long. And I really think we should think about that. And I'm, I don't know if it's right now when you think about that, but I definitely think that either now or over the course of the coming year, we should think about rotating me off 
and rotating some new blood in, just because I think it's better for the institution to do it that way. So, um, uh, you know, I, I had called Jeff and said, hey, you know, what do you think about um, uh, being chair and chair and, um, you know, Jeff is not um, jumping at the bit to, to do it. So I wanted to offer my seat up. If anybody's thinking in the next little bit they would like to do chair, they could, uh, I'm willing to step down, I guess. But if not, we'll. Yeah, we, we can do it this way, but I think that was a great idea on Jeff's part. You know, maybe you end up chairing a couple of meetings, and so the transition is a little bit easier. You don't have to do it, but it's just something to think about. So anyway, I just wanted to toss that out there before we, before we tackle this item. Okay. Um, so anybody interested? Or at least, or you want to think about it over the, over the ensuing next few months? Okay, well, I'll leave it at that. Um, are there any motions? Is it for the next year? Yeah, for the coming year. The this is this is calendar year. Yeah, yeah, January to January. I would motion George McQuiston chair and Jeff Struble vice chair. Okay, Paul, can we do both at, at the with the same with the same motion? Okay, all in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, that carries. Thank you. But let's do be thinking over the coming year. Okay, communications, Michael. Yes, we have uh, two administrative approvals, uh, one for an item up on Northwest 24th, which is just a fence being added to a building that's uh, had a few revisions in the last six months. And then secondarily, a um, sign for a restaurant up in the Asian District on North Clawson. Okay, terrific. Um, any comments from the planning department? Uh, I want to speak to a couple of uh, questions that were raised by the commission at the meeting last month. Uh, one was the status of the code enforcement proceedings of the snow cone stand at Robinson and 23rd. Um, I've been in contact with the code enforcement department and they informed me that the proceedings are proceeding and they just take a while to run their course through the court system. So we're uh, keeping an eye on that for you and we'll report back next time we have any news on that front. Um, there was also a question about uh, the Gold Dome and whether or not a um, certificate of approval was required. Uh, I did discuss this issue at length with Aubrey and it's not necessarily due to the fact that they changed the surface, well, they changed the color of the roof or they painted the brick, but because it's not that specific in the UD as it is in, for example, Bricktown. But there is a provision that does require CA for when you modify the exterior appearance of a building. <laughs> and clearly they've done that. So we've been in contact with the new owners and uh, suggested to them that they uh, work with us to get an application in for the work they've done as soon as possible. Um, haven't heard back from them yet. I plan on trying to contact them by phone later this week and see what their um, reaction is to the initial contact and uh, carrying that forward as it moves through the process. So I want to clarify that <clears throat> the, the brick was not painted. Right. They painted the brick. Right. There's nothing in our ordinance says we cannot not, paint not unpainted UD, brick. Not in UD. Really? Okay. I was not, that, that, that's that's in Bricktown and I think downtown, but not in UD. Um, the only other thing we have out there is the uh, surveys from the cottage district and for whatever reason Mr. Bleakley has been, I know that he was out of the country for three weeks in Africa, but he's been back for at least that amount of time <laughs> and he still hasn't uh, been able to forward those surveys to me. So we're, I'm bugging him every week with at least one email to try and get those surveys in so we can start looking at what the results were, find out what the concerns and issues are and see how we might be able to proceed to solve some of their concerns. Okay, terrific, thanks. And, and uh, the other item I wanted to mention that came up today is this coordinating a, a meeting or some type of information exchange with these 23rd yeah, I think groups. That, that came up and was discussed by the commission when we had the SPUD back in November. Um, I did discuss that with Aubrey to some extent. She wasn't here at the meeting, of course, that, that time, and she hasn't been um, since. But um, her reaction to that was basically that that kind of uh, 
directive or request. It really needs to come from the council level to staff. So you might, uh, I don't know, maybe go through the mayor's office or through the ward uh, council person that you have to okay. suggest that kind of discussion be initiated and see where it goes from there, I guess. I mean, the bottom line is our resources are limited, and of course, and we don't have uh, the, the kind of time or, or, or amount of resources that are necessary to start doing parking surveys and that kind of thing. But we're more than willing to start working on that. It's just that, it, it, according to Aubrey, it kind of needs to come from the council level. OK. okay. We have um, we have been contacted by OU for student projects, but it's really from the School of Landscape Architecture, and that is one of the projects we put on the list for them to help us out with. Okay, terrific. And that, so I guess another approach would be um, maybe am I allowed to you know find out who the find out and contact the head of the Uptown Twenty Three group and say. You know, how about if you and I write a letter or something to to the city council I, I person? I don't see a reason why you couldn't do that. Okay. Okay. Now, Helen, do you have any any concerns? Well, then I could write a letter. You know what you're asking. Well, yes. If if I'm a you know, I don't know what I'm allowed and allowed to do, but to to reach out to the person who's head of the Twenty Third Street Association and say. Could we write a letter to our council person requesting that we um, that they ask the planning department to facilitate some discussion between the Urban Design Commission, the 23rd Association, some of the neighborhood groups like Heritage Hills, Jefferson Park, Mesta Park, to talk about parking issues? Well, if he's amenable to it, I think that's okay. But even even if he's not, I think as the chairman of this uh, commission, you could do it on your own. Okay. Okay, perfect. Well, maybe I'll, I'll look at that, doing that then. Okay, great. Anything else? Nothing else from our staff. Okay. Comments from the commission? No. Nope. Okay. Next meeting date is in the agenda. If there are no objections, we'll consider ourselves adjourned by unanimous consent. Okay. Thank you.